So there's a new pre-publication release of a study entitled Epidemiology of COVID-19 Among Children in China that has a lot of relevance, I think, for business owners, leaders, BCBAs, clinicians that are delivering ABA services. So today I wanted to cover some of that really quickly and also link you to the article so you can start to make the considerations yourself. Anytime you look at a resource like this, you should first look at the funding sources, any potential biases that may be going on. Now, the authors state that this is from a funding source and specifically a grant from the Science and Technology Commission of Shanghai Municipality, as well as a financial disclosure that the authors have indicated that they have no financial relationships relevant to this article to disclose. So super important, limiting some of the bias here. And additionally, no conflicts of interest. So first some broad strokes of what the article found, then we're gonna dive in on the potential implications for people that are being served in ages 18 and below in ABA services. So the study examined the epidemiological characteristics and transmission patterns of 2,143 pediatric patients pediatric patients with COVID-19 using a retrospective analytical approach. So it's retrospective, it's specific to China, and it's an epidemiological study. So this is not from our field, note that, but these are the sort of experts we should be relying on, especially in this time. And so specifically what this is adding to the literature base is children of, at all ages were susceptible to COVID-19, but no significant gender difference was found. Clinical manifestations of pediatric patients were generally less severe than those of adults patients. However, young children, particularly infants, were vulnerable to COVID-19 infections. Now they split it into two different things because of the testing issues, there's both suspected and then confirmed cases. First of all, suspected cases. They're identified if a child at high risk had two of the following conditions, a fever or respiratory symptoms or digestive symptoms, such as vomiting, nausea, or diarrhea, or fatigue. Number two, some specific laboratory tests. And then number three, x-ray imaging that was turning out abnormal. And note here that for a child of medium or low risk, similar diagnostic criteria were applied after excluding influenza and other common respiratory infections. So suspected cases who met any one of the following criteria were defined as confirmed cases. And they have two specific things, some genetic sequencing, as well as swab specimens that could be analyzed. Paper is available freely. It's linked down below. I wanna just talk about a few different areas of the data. First of all, Table one, characteristics of children's COVID-19 cases in China. For all of the cases that they sampled, it was only 4.4% of them that were asymptomatic. This is a really big difference. You see, oftentimes in the media, it's being talked about how this asymptomatic and children are more or less like carriers that can pass it on, but there's actually some impacts going on. The story that this data tells me is that what we had heard about it not impacting as much, largely across media, right, for people that are under 18, while it's not as severe, there is a caveat coming up that it is actually impacting when you take this a little bit more seriously than we have in the past few weeks. Now, in addition, if you look at table number two, there's a different severity of illness by age group breakdown. And specifically here, really interesting to note that the chances of a case becoming critical are actually an inverse of age. So what that means is that infants are some of the most severely impacted by this if they contract it. Now, while those numbers are low, they're still very real. Every single person matters in something like this. Now what's also interesting is they broke down in a line graph and bar graph, a way to visually see how many people are actually getting infected and the severity type from mild, moderate, severe, critical, et cetera. So figure two, the onset diagnosis date of 413 confirmed male children. And note here, the purple at the bottom is asymptomatic cases. As you go up there, the orange are mild, gray common, yellow severe cases, and then it's hard to see, but some of them are also critical there in blue. What I see by looking at this is that the far majority of people are actually experiencing at least mild symptoms. It is not nearly as many that we think are just asymptomatic as was previously talked about in the last few weeks of media. If you follow this onto figure three, not the exact same trends, but very similar, regardless of male versus female. Another interesting thing was just how long does it take to actually identify these cases? And they were saying that the average was about two days. And that two days is when things are still being spread, obviously, but it could be as much as 42 days for them to identify these sort of cases. And this was with really, really, really fast acting health professionals trying to identify as fast as possible, which we know has been an issue in certain places, such as the United States where I reside. And this is part of the big topic and debate right now in ABA services is when you identify a case, what potentially could have happened and we don't know this thing's completely silent and what this means for the typical aba professional whether you're rbt bcba business owner etc you're involved some sort of way is that the severity of the issue is actually much higher for the population that we typically serve especially much more than advertised at first we work with a high risk population specific cases can be extremely high risk due to specifics that come with the disabilities the different disorders that we work with however this also provides kind of two confirmations we've been talking about 
And the first is that the data do indicate that children that are of school age are typically of low risk unless they have specific issues, pre-existing conditions. Think respiratory, cardiac, immune disorders, things like that. However, it did confirm what we knew about asymptomatic kids or people that are just presenting mild or moderate symptoms. And that is that this spreads very, very quickly as a result of human interaction. And that two meter rule that we have going on that's being recommended right now is a social distancing that is extremely hard to follow when we're talking about in-center work, even close one-on-one -on -one work. And so what do we do about this? I will not pretend to have any sort of answers. I think the number one thing you can do is get more informed and try to make the best decisions you can for the clients that you're serving, the people that are your loved ones in your own life. And it's really up to the, the the community of people here, us behavior analysts, to decide what is the best way to move forward. Uh, if you have any thoughts, any concerns, any issues down below, my name is Ryan O. This is Daily BA. You usually get a mix of different behavior analytics sort of things, things relevant to human behavior. I'm focusing a few videos specific on this as I find new resources, and this is one of them. Make sure you check it out, and that's your Daily BA.